So the Voigtlander VESA 2, 6x9 medium format folding camera from the 1950s. I've done a few videos on this camera before and I absolutely love it. What I've always done with this particular camera is shoot black and white film and I've been more than happy with the results, but I've been itching to try some colour film. I did that probably eight, nine months ago and uh, I put a roll of film through it recorded the video, had everything ready to go, sent the film off to the lab. Unfortunately, the lab lost my film. So the whole roll has gone, never to be seen again. No idea where it is. It was registered, so it had been delivered. It's gone, Burger. So uh, yeah, so that kind of put me off for a long while. So I kept shooting black and white with it. Finally got my ass into gear, put a roll of Kodak Ektar 100 into the camera and I've wound on straight past number one as usual. So, you know, on six by nine format, I would usually get eight frames. Uh, on this occasion I've got seven now to play with so uh, I thought I'd just uh, nip down just to a local wetland area I don't know if it's an official wetland area or just flooded paddocks but we'll try and get some photographs down here now one thing I still find absolutely amazing about folding cameras is the pocketability I mean look here in this pocket I've got a light meter that's how I'm going to record the light for my exposures and in the other top pocket somewhere there that is the Voigtlander Besser 2. Look at that. Talk about pocketable cameras or what. In she goes. I mean, you can't get much more pocketable than that, can you? Beautiful. Now at the moment, on the wetland side of the track, which is there, I'm not actually seeing anything that's pushing me buttons, anything that makes me want to get the camera out and, and take a shot just yet. But over my shoulder there, there's a little stand of silver birch I believe. I'm thinking when the sun comes out from behind the clouds that might make a nice shot. Get the camera out, frame up, see how it's looking. I just want to wait now until we get a little bit of light on the trees, if we get a bit of light. Without the light on the trees this shot's pointless. Get an idea of what we're looking at. At the moment 60th of a second f8. So uh, once the light comes out that should go to maybe 125th, 250th hopefully. Let's see how that goes. Handheld. Oh, look. Love, 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 love this camera. So unfortunately, the light is playing funny buggers. It's not coming out to play yet. It might do, it might do as we go along. So I'll just keep walking because what I'm certainly not going to do is just burn off a shot for the sake of it. Not at the cost of the film and the cost of developing and processing. If I get a photograph out of this, I want it to be worth it. So if the light doesn't play ball, I guarantee there'll be no photography today because I ain't wasting it. Not a chance. Nice walk anyway. So that stand of trees on my shoulder there, that'll make a nice shot as well. Again, no light, no shot. Shame. The clouds are moving fast, but unfortunately, I think the, uh, the big bank of cloud is so low and the sun is obviously dropping down to the horizon now. I think it slipped me a slack one. I don't think it's gonna happen. Not to worry, not to worry. The film's loaded. We don't have to shoot it today. We're not gonna shoot it today by the looks of it. We'll save it for another day. <laughs> the joys of film photography. Now, if it had been a black and white film I got in here, I could have rattled off this film, got it done, processed it myself, had a bit of contrast, and made quite a dynamic little shot out of black and white. But now, colour, I've decided on colour. For better or worse, colour's the way we're going, but just not today. Chin, I'm itching to take a shot. That might make a shot over there. Actually, <laughs> no, it won't, it's crap. I just want to make a shot. <laughs> Not that badly though. Well, temptation finally got the better of me. I had to take a shot just because I love this camera. Anyway, so that's the shot I took over my shoulder there. The taller fence post in the middle there. I just had to angle the camera up a little bit so that uh, that didn't get lost like that in the shadows. So I kind of raised the camera as high as I could because I'm only a short boy. So I raised it just so it's sticking out of the shadows like that. And it makes, uh, ah, it's never going to be a winner, but uh, it's a shot. I've made a shot. <laughs> all right as you can see the clouds are rolling in pretty thick and fast now so uh, i think we'll pull the plug on that for today tomorrow's forecast is heavy rain all day so i think uh, that rules out tomorrow friday saturday sunday fingers crossed we might finally get through six more shots on this roll of film all right see you later all right so what about four days five days later the sun has finally come out to play unfortunately i'm working so uh, it's just timed it badly and I'm desperate, desperate to get rid of this film. It's burned off the last six frames. So I'm going to drag the best along to my first job of the day, local horse racing meet. 
what I'm going to get out of it, I'm not entirely sure. I've kind of envisioned getting a shot of the horses coming over the jumps. Then that will get a bit of crowd stuff if there's a crowd. It's only six frames, so it's not going to take long. I wouldn't imagine so. Uh, let's see how it goes, guys. Getting down to the start to the fourth. On Vincent Vice, number three Old Town Road is a scratching. Lily Sutherland is here in the lead and a little bit. And this is Lily Sutherland. Too good here. Quoted by McPhee from Catch Today, Joe. Here and looks like. Okay, oops, let's set off. On the whole, I think that went quite well. Shooting the Besser at the races, I think it went mostly okay. Got a few crowd shots, you know, just people sat about milling about. There wasn't a big crowd there, but then I took the last two frames of horses going over the jumps. Now, uh, you try to time it, you've got one frame and you try to time it for the peak of the action. So I'm kind of watching, 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 listening. You can hear the thunder of the horse's hooves bounding down the track. And then the first horse comes over the track, you ping it and you think, shit, I should have waited because then there's a group of horses coming over and that would have made a better shot filling the frame more. So on two, two efforts I did and did exactly the same thing. They did that uh, jump twice. So I don't know if it's even the same horse and jockey. But uh, time will tell. The rest of the shots with the uh, Canon Mundi X for the paper, I think they came out quite sweet. Now I've got to get the film out of the Besser, get it posted out to the lab, and probably, I don't know, best part of the week, I'm guessing, waiting for the uh, for the images to come back. I shot one frame when the, when the jockeys were coming out of the sheds, and uh, I'm not entirely sure whether or not I wound on. And it's so easy to double expose a frame. So I, I thought, bugger it, just in case, I'll wind on and uh, yeah, waste a frame if necessary. But uh, so we'll, we'll see. I don't know if I've got five images out of this. I don't know if I've got six images out of this. I don't know if I've got seven. I don't know if I've got anything. As they come to the stand double, their first occasion, they can do now. At the moment the leaders go, look at the seekers, they've all made it. No tears of the scrambly in the back. This time, Kangaroo hopped over it. First horse comes over the track, you ping it, and you think, shit, I should have waited because then there's a group of horses coming over, and that would have made a better shot filling the frame more. So on two two efforts I did, and did exactly the same thing. They did that uh, jump twice, so I don't know if you've seen in the same horse and jockey. So what did I think of shooting colour film in the Besser? Because I'm numerically challenged, I've made a few notes. So the cost per roll, Kodak Ektar 120 is $37. In the Besser, that gets me eight frames. It cost me $7 for delivery. To develop and scan it, it cost me $20 to make a grand total of $64. Now, on the eight frames I should have got from the Besser, that would have made it $8 per image because I skipped straight past the first frame. So seven frames is $9 per roll. On getting the scans back and processing them, there's only three images that I actually like. So that's uh, three, <laughs> three images have cost me $21 per frame, which is, uh, I like the colors that have come out of the Besser. It's, it's done a sterling job and as an exercise, it was great, but it's not one I'm gonna repeat. Not at that price, $21 a frame, forget that mate. I'll stick with black and white. That way I can process it myself, keep the cost down. All right guys, apart from that, was it worth it? I don't know. <laughs>
you only live once. If you got something from this, fantastic. All I got from it is an empty wallet. See you next time. I've been fancying interchangeable lens rangefinders. Anyway, one particular camera that I've been interested in is a Zorki 4 from the former Soviet Union. Anyway, let's just get that one back on the body. Unfortunately, the front of the case looks like a gimp's codpiece.